Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at what's hot in the luxury cannabis market. We're also going to take a look at the cannabis market's overview for May 2020. We'll dive into four different states and see what's happening across the board. So we did a previous podcast about uh, low-budget products. So only seemed fit to do the opposite of that and see what's hot in the luxury high-end marketplace. So this has been filtered to the top 10% of pricing, looking at two disruptors in the luxury pricing tier are both Dose Dial tablets from Dosis, that's the company's Bliss Skew. It grew over 6,000% between a fourth quarter of 2019 and first quarter 2020. So it's kind of parabolic as anything popular kind of comes out, goes straight up, so that's good. So it comes in a convenient child a proof container with 30 tablets and each dissolvable tablet has 3.7 milligram dose of THC and CBD. So Bliss has a ratio of 91 THC to CBD for an uplifting fun effect while the Calm has a ratio of 1 to 10 THC to CBD for a more relaxing effect. So the average price is about $30. So it's about 100 milligrams for $30. It's about 30% more expensive than other brands that offer 100 milligrams for 16 to $20. And it's not that convenient. There are mints, uh, you know, low, low micro dose available. Um, I just don't see what the point is. If there was some tech behind it, uh, some app or something, you know, with uh, suggestions, recommendations, or just tracking or some kind of more of a metered dose, something that's actually going to give you uh, an exact dosage. Outside of that, it's just a mint. It may have helped that in California, they already have a disposable ration vape pen. It's been around for a couple of years and consumers like the ease of use discretionary aspect of it. I don't know. Maybe people just uh, like the brand in California and went back to try their mints. I don't know. Moving on, we're going to look at the Canna Girls Gold and Black Transdermal Rubs. Those are the two fastest growing luxury topical SKUs, growing over 900 and 600% respectively. Each product has a THC to CBD ratio of one to two, and the gold is $80 for 50 milligrams of CBD and 25 milligrams THC, while the black is $120 with 120 milligrams of CBD and 60 milligrams of THC. So it's a unique topical brand that they use emu oil as the transdermal carrier, which is supposed to be able to penetrate in the skin more effectively as a transdermal topical that contains THC and CBD. Can Originals is the targeting cannabis consumer with chronic pain issues. Almost 30% of cannabis users have chronic pain. So that could explain this product's popularity. So unless they have a trademark on that, I know of people in Oregon who use emu oil, Kush creams, for example, is one of them. And I would not pay $120. I mean, maybe one person might do it once, but they're not going to keep coming back. So these prices should come way down as, uh, you know, any kind of distillate, isolate, whatever they're using, uh, the prices of those CBD and THC bulk prices are coming way down. So um, I I don't think that there's going to be top shelf unless you're adding more unique rare cannabinoids to that. All right, the last product here is the Chill Chocolate Dream Bar. It grew over 175% between fourth quarter 2019 and first quarter 2020, making it one of the top disruptors in the luxury chocolate segment. The SKU has 200 milligrams of CBD, 50 milligrams THC, and 30 milligrams of melatonin. So it has 10 servings priced at $20 per bar. So that's interesting. I haven't seen too many that have melatonin in it, but it has a one to four THC to CBD ratio plus that additional melatonin, it makes it a pretty good target for consumers who want to sleep. Almost 30% of chocolate edible using cannabis consumers claim they suffer from insomnia. So I know a lot of people have anxiety and pain. That can also help. All right, so that was an interesting glimpse into the luxury cannabis market. I think disposable income is going to be more of a factor. People are going to be really pulling back and probably spending the same amount, but trying to get more for that dollar. So uh, trying to look for bargains or deals or just, you know, bottom shelf if they have to in order to get more uh, for the same dollar amount. All right, so let's take a look at what's selling across multiple markets. We're going to take a look at the cannabis market overview for May, the headset report. They were covering 10 markets, including Canada. They stopped doing that, and now they're just focusing on four for some reason. So 
we've adjusted to look at the, the total sales for just California, Colorado, Nevada, and Washington. So total sales uh, for the month over month, looking at May, California had 301 million. Uh, that's down 6%. Colorado had 99 million. That's down 32%. Nevada, 39 million, down 32%. And Washington was flat at 112 million. So year over year, we're also down. Um, California is negative 35%. Colorado is down negative 23. Nevada is down only 25. And Washington is fairly flat. We're actually positive 2%. So maybe that's the only positive thing in Washington market for like the last five years. All right, looking at average basket size. Um, in California in May, it was $70. I think that may be fairly low. I heard it was maybe about 160 during quarantine, but that's an increase of almost 12%. Colorado had increased theirs almost 5% to $62 on average. The average person in Nevada was spending almost $100 at uh, 48% increase. And Washington, 7.77. Sounds kind of lucky. Their average basket price was $35. So this is how many baskets or how many purchases were made um, in the millions. So 4.2 million in California, that's down 16%. Colorado was down 28% at only 1.5 million. Uh, 410,000 in Nevada, that's a negative 53% because no one's there. And Washington, fairly flat, negative 6%. They only had 3.2 million. All right, looking at brand concentration, I would expect a lot more companies to capitulate and, and consolidate. It's happening, but not as visually, not as much as you would think. So in California, it's down negative 1%. So it's all across the board is about a third of the companies um, are consolidated or concentrated. So there's about a third of brand consolidation with the exception of Colorado at only 17%. I think maybe that exception is because a lot of uh, companies in Colorado are seed to sale. They own the producer, the processor, and the retailer. And so there's not an opportunity for them to get their brand in another store, for example, because that's the competitor. So there's less consolidation. I don't know. I'm totally guessing. If you guys have a better idea, let me know. Uh, but in Nevada, we're seeing consolidation around 37%. That's actually a lot higher um, it's actually down negative 4%. And then Washington is flat at 29%. So I think across the board, you probably could grab the top five brands and they're probably gobbling up 80% of all of the, the revenue. I'll, I'm also guessing on that one, but that's generally what happens in, in traditional retail. And I think some of the reports I've seen early on that were isolated were, uh, were similar to that. Um, but hopefully we'll have some more information next month in June with some of the other provinces up in Canada and we can update this report and bring you a little bit more than just four regions. But um, fairly flat is good. So we're not dipping. We're not pulling back. Numbers look solid. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.